It is the owner and general manager of your Dallas Cowboys. It is Jerry Jones. Good morning, sir. Hey, guys. Kevin, Corey, Mike. Man, what a day. Yes, sir. What a day. Here we go. Los oh. Angeles, here we come. All right. So, and I want to ask you, we've won three in a row. The Cowboys have won three in a row. I have nothing to do with it. Is do you have a good luck routine that you need to make sure it keeps rolling going into SoFi? Well, first of all, you're part of the routine, getting to have this show with you every Friday. Uh, but secondly, you have a lot to do with it. Uh, when uh, you, uh, uh, You're a great conduit for me uh, to uh, visit with uh, uh, the fans that do listen to you, the one or two. Mm -hmm. yep. But uh, candidly, uh, uh, you're a big part of this thing. I've always thought we share something in common. We both chose uh, to spend our life in sport in different ways, but sport. And uh, that's that was a big decision for me, and I'm glad you made it too. But seriously, you've got a lot to do with it. Now, you've made it clear, and I think we all understand, there is certainly no quarterback controversy or anything of the like. What I was curious about, though, is there anything that Cooper Rush does that you think might be better than what Dak does, or you would like to see Dak integrate into his game when he comes back? Well, I, I think that uh, 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 I would look at the overall thing, and uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Cooper's uh, perception and how we use him uh, speaks to um, uh, a more dependence on the running game. Uh, I think it, uh, it, it, uh, when you've got a player like Dak, uh, boy, you can uh, step on out there and do some inordinate things that uh, – you hope you can, and you can. Uh, but uh, uh, Romo had that same thing. And uh, uh, so this gets you back down into uh, uh, really uh, uh, depending on the scheme, depending on uh, 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 kind of a everybody doing their job, but having to do it a little better. And I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, if you look at life, or look at uh, your body, or look at any other thing. Uh, the, 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 it's really built on a premise that if something's short, something else will go long and take make up for it. And that's the way bodies work. And uh, so uh, I think that's what you're seeing, and I think that's what you're seeing with him at quarterback. Uh, everybody else just stepping up and uh, playing at a higher level. Now, does that mean they're not going to play at this high or higher with Dak? Well, that's when you hear us talk about what a leader Dak is. And he does inspire men to go about beyond what they thought they could go. And uh, that's a part of his plus. Jerry, I'm wondering how much do you talk to Dak Prescott? And then has that changed over the years with talking to the team or slash talking to the quarterback in your tenure of 30 plus years of, of being the owner general manager? I really can't answer that. I really can't. I just can't answer it because I don't have a feel for it. Uh, I communicate uh, when the situation calls for it, uh, and it's not a, a structured thing. It's not a planned uh, thing that I'm going to have this many meetings. I'm going to be sure and touch base with this player three times uh, uh, during a period of time. Uh, that's not the way it works. Uh, uh, but the human beings that we are have enough impromptu situations that with me where I am, uh, at the uh, decision maker on the team, personnel, as well as uh, uh, from the standpoint of being able to uh, uh, do some things when somebody's uh, uh, got a need. Uh, and I'm not just talking about a player, but uh, we all have needs, our family, we all have things that come up. And um, uh, if you're human, and I've had more help than anybody, uh, a helping hand or a, 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 an interested, a sensitive hand can make a difference. That's the way I communicate. Jerry, the, with this team playing so well with Cooper uh, so far, what do you think the thing is that you've learned about this team that maybe you didn't know before this season started? Well, I, I couldn't have known what I believed to be right before our eyes, such a chemistry and such a uh, uh, everybody pitching in and and uh, uh, having a, if you will, a major challenge right off the bat in our first ball game, at the end of our first ball game, 
and uh, you you uh, uh, don't don't want to. I guess you want to find it out, but you don't want to have to have the situation that causes you to have to find it out, and that is a, a an adjustment, a major adjustment that could be uh, a real negative and turns into a positive. Uh, uh, actually, Dak was a part of that his rookie year, and a real, real setback for us turned into a positive uh, to, in a lot of ways. Uh, this has uh, got a little marks of that. Uh, the setback could turn out to be the gathering of the troops and uh, the the uh, strength that uh, goes with it. Uh, again, I come to mind, Mike, uh, that's when the feature really can uh, be on uh, the leadership that the head coach is. And I don't want to not, I don't want to say head coach. I want to say Mike uh, because uh, it's Mike. It's his skills. It's his way. It's his personality. It's his uh, having his butt kicked, and everybody knows it from time to time, and then him coming back and uh, the steady hand. All of that goes with the type of thing that uh, he can bring to the table, and he's bringing it. Does that mean at this point in the season that despite the adversity, do you feel better about this team than maybe you did at the beginning of the season? Well, that's uh, uh, you could say that. Uh, you, you really could say that. The thing is that I didn't know some things about this team that I know now, but I sure don't know it all uh, uh, because no one can or does. Uh, but I've seen us uh, handle adversity that I didn't know uh, how we would handle. I hoped we would handle adversity. I really didn't know we'd have this kind of adversity. Mm. That's a rough blow to lose Dak right off the bat. And so uh, – uh, I, I didn't know if we could overcome that in the way we have. You see that, and it's a credit to the fortitude and the will here that's involved in this team. Now, we're doing a lot of talking about this, and, of course, we got one coming up here this week against the world champs, and it's out there in alien territory. Although I will tell you this, you can't imagine the Cowboy fans that are out there. There's a bunch of them. Uh, being out in California for our training camp helps that. But we've just got a ton of uh, Los Angeles Cowboy fans, and uh, uh, they were there when we opened it up, opened that beautiful new stadium, and uh, I hope we'll have a nice helping of them out there uh, Sunday. Are you surprised at all then, since this game almost feels at times like a neutral site game, even though it is in SoFi, y'all have a better record than the Rams. Are you surprised? Because M- Coach McCarthy was surprised yesterday that y'all are five and a half point underdogs. Do you think that the Cowboys are getting the respect they deserve? Oh, I understand. That's against the world champs. Mm. And uh, uh, you've got to hang, uh, you've got to have something to do. And so, uh, uh uh, setting it up uh, as to the uh, way people are feeling about it, uh, uh, which which would be underdog or the favorite, those kind of things. Uh, I get all of that. That's important. That, by the way, is very important to interest in the games. Very important. And uh, uh, But uh, I just absolutely love Mike's response when he said, uh, we ain't nobody's underdog, I guess. To paraphrase him a little bit, but uh, I love that response. And there, there you go. That was impromptu, too, and that was real. Jerry, on Tuesday, you spoke with Sean and RJ. Said, "Hey, let's see how Dak progresses. We haven't had practice yet. Now that you've had practice this week, how much progress has Dak made? And maybe are you feeling more optimistic about him playing against Philadelphia?" Okay, you were going good on your question Uh-oh. to the one about can he play against Philadelphia. Okay. That's too succinct, mm. but he is improving, uh, and he is gripping it stronger, and he is uh, doing some of the things. Is he uh, uh, able to grip and throw uh, in a way that you'd want him to play in a ball game? No. Uh, but is he making a lot of improvement, which is a key in a rehab situation? Yes. Uh, I don't know when he will be back out there, but I will tell you he is improving. Jerry, the the running game, but the the the, the monster you have with Pollard and Zeke is. Are you getting the production that you want out of it, or do you think there's there's a lot more that they can they can get out of that thing? Well, you know, uh, Washington. When we talk about the running game, uh, the strength of their team is their uh, is right in the eye of the storm 
relative to uh, the running game, and that's their defensive line. Uh, they're they're a, a very, very, very formidable defensive line, uh, which would thwart uh, the run game if if set up to do it. And they had a good game plan, and they really knew how we were going to uh, have to beat them, and they knew we were going to have to get some run established, and uh, uh, knew what uh, what we can and and maybe uh, uh, would be doing relative to the run. And uh, so uh, let's give let's give Washington Redskins some credit for a little bit of an anemic run game out here uh, uh, past Sunday. Uh, that doesn't mean that you stop running it, and we didn't. And that doesn't mean that it doesn't, when they set it up like that, doesn't give you some openings to throw the ball, and it did. Uh, so uh, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't want to be cavalier and say I'm not concerned about the running game, but I, I, I am going to be realistic and say Washington had a lot to do with that anemic running game. On the flip side, are you concerned at all about the ability to stop the run? Because this defense has been phenomenal, and if there is one ding in it thus far, it has been some trouble stopping the run. Well, uh, uh, because most teams know the value of establishing the run, then uh, uh, being sensitive about being able to stop the run, concerned, if you will, whatever, is natural. And uh, I don't talk to anybody that's not concerned about stopping the running game or, or interested in establishing the running game. Uh, that's, that's across the board. Getting it done, that's a different deal. Uh, and the answer is, I think we will, as we move along, uh, have times when we have to adjust. Uh, but I think we're capable of still providing the pressure that we want to provide, uh, if you will, having the kind of defense that can fly to the ball and get uh, hopefully more takeaways and at the same time be a steady in the middle in the run. Now, uh, outside, the run game outside has uh, been a little more of our uh, Achilles heel off tackle, it would seem. And so, uh, But I think we're capable of, of adjusting and uh, having success there. And you know, obviously the Rams struggle to run the ball this year. They throw the ball to Cooper Cup a whole bunch. How excited, nervous, I don't know the right word is, to see Cooper Cup versus, let's say, Trayvon Diggs all day sa- uh, Sunday. Well, I am uh, uh, I guess the word is excited. I'm just excited about getting to go out there and uh, play the world champs. Uh, I'm glad this bunch is the world champs because uh, uh, we, we could have that uh, substantive of victory if we can get a victory by beating the defending champions. And uh, Cooper Cup is outstanding. And uh, he's when I see him, I just think of, boy, that's the NFL. Only in the NFL. And there he comes in, and uh, uh, he's, he's just uh, got a combination of skill and smarts and uh, the kinds of things that you think about a receiver uh, being able to accomplish uh, work ethic and uh, it is rightfully so has gotten the accolades and the success that he's had. He's a heck of a player. Jerry, the Matt Stafford spent a lot of time in Detroit and you know kind of suffered some a little bit there, and then goes to to L.A. and gets his Super Bowl and shows that he can be that guy. Did that give him that's that win give him a, a pretty clear path to the Hall of Fame in your eyes? Yeah, uh, well, uh, I don't want to uh, – I think he has the exceptional ability and probably will have the resume to have really been as accomplished or as good as he's been over his career and then to have that Hall of Fame. Now, they'd be the first to tell you, and I might echo that, he may not be through having Super Bowl. And so uh, uh, I think he's uh, very likely to be in the Hall of Fame. Do you uh, do you have a status update for us about Jordan Lewis? I know he had been kind of on the fence for this weekend's game. Uh, my, my bet is that uh, 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 we'll see. Really, uh, I, th- I think it does depend on these next couple of days with him. And I'm not going to make a bet on that. And then I had one more defensive question. Micah... 
was talking about, because, you know, obviously people are quick to make comparisons and talking about the doomsday defense, and he said, I hope we're making them proud. Do you think Micah in this defense would make those old doomsday defenses proud? Yes, I do. And uh, I have uh, have gotten to know personally the people that played on it uh, over the years. And uh, uh, there's no doubt in mind the qualities that Micah has on and off the field and his uh, penchant for uh, wanting to uh, uh, maximize, wanting to just be the best. Uh, I, I think he's got all the makeup that those guys uh, uh, would acknowledge and smile about. And Jerry, you're speaking of Micah there. You know he has the sweet out at the Rangers game. Him and uh, him and a, a couple players Dak, and Gallup yeah. and, and Dak show up for the game where Aaron Judge hit the record breaking home run. And I know that ball, um, Mike and Kevin were talking about. It was about a two and a half million dollar ball is what that that record breaking ball was. And I kept saying, I wanted to prove I'm the greatest fan of all time. If I caught it, I don't care about the money. I'm throwing it back. All right, I don't want that ball. I want to show I'm a great <laughs> fan. Would Jerry Jones have thrown it back? Or are you keeping that sucker? Oh, I, I think I'd like to, uh, him to have it to uh, uh, the, the the player uh, at the end of the day. Uh, now, if I didn't uh, uh, have any money, <laughs> <laughs> so it's all relative. <laughs> uh, let's let's be real a little bit here. <laughs> Jerry, we tell Corey yeah, to get real all yes, the time, for yes, sure. Yeah, we try our best, Jerry. Personality, your personality, your chair, your charitability—that uh, uh, that will change on you when you're broke. Jerry, I was wondering, you saying you're a, a baseball fan uh, last week, and obviously you grew up next to where SoFi Stadium is. And are you a Dodgers fan, or were you? What team did you root for when you were a baseball fan? Well, first of all, baseball was my love, and uh, playing it was, uh, I still love it. And I got to travel, played American Legion, played all the all the way up through, and, and so uh, I love baseball and just followed meticulously all the players that played it. And, and I was in college when Maris and uh, uh, Mantle were playing together, and Maris broke the record. So, but I'm a great baseball fan. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, it, it went. It went. Uh, it obviously went football for me. Uh, but it wasn't because that's where my heart was, or that's where I enjoyed playing. And uh, I uh, followed all the teams, uh, followed all the players. I was really a player baseball fan more than a team baseball fan. But my part of the world uh, in Arkansas, you couldn't go. Uh, down a street in a, a subdivision, or you couldn't go down the street in a just a street, and people would be sitting on the porch, and they'd be sitting there in a chair and uh, gathered around listening to the radio and listening to the St. Louis Cardinals. Oh wow! Okay, it was just like uh, the the sun going down, and it was just you'd walk down your street in those uh, afternoons, those spring afternoons, and summers and uh it was just almost a rite of passage and you'd wave at everybody or see everybody over there and everybody be sitting around some of them having a beer some of them just uh, sitting there kind of having a social and everybody just glued to that radio not television radio jerry i hope you understand bringing up the st louis cardinals is still a little painful <laughs> here in the metroplex but i appreciate that answer of course i do of course i do <laughs> bringing up that of course i do but uh, uh that's just the way it was it was that way sure. for a lot of the uh, south and uh as a matter of fact when uh, the the uh, extent of the sophistication of my purchase of the cowboys was that the cowboys were losing so much money uh about a million dollars a month to be exact oh. the cowboys were losing that my idea was that uh the way to write that ship was to do something like the Cardinals had done in their association with Anheuser Busch and Bud Weiser, and that surely that association that that made Anheuser Busch and Bud Weiser what they were, and I dropped it at that. That was enough for me to go and be involved with the Cowboys. Uh, I never dreamed that as time would follow, I knew I had to have something other than tickets and television. 
to make it work. Uh, so they were in their own way a little role model for me as to maybe how to uh, justify somehow getting the juice to flow through the veins of the Cowboys. And that's fascinating business side right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Jerry, before we let you go, Zeke said that uh, he didn't go to that game with Dak and, and Micah because he didn't want to make the drive from Frisco to Arlington. Is there a way, like if he'd have asked, can I get a ride in the chopper, would you have set that up for him? Or I would. <laughs> yes, I would. Of course I would. That'd be fun, and that'd be a nice, uh, uh, nice memory. I remember after the Super Bowl, our first Super Bowl in Los Angeles. I remember getting on the helicopter uh, with uh, Daryl Johnston, and uh, Mark Sepnoski was on there with Daryl, and uh, boy, we lifted off from that uh, Coliseum, and we lifted off. I mean, from the Rose Bowl, and we lifted off to go to our post-game party, and I'll never forget flying over all those lights in Los Angeles and Daryl and Mark sitting on that plane, and we were going about, uh, we were several hundred feet above ground, and I thought, my God, right going over Los Angeles, we have just drove a flag in the top of the world. It was just an unbelievable feeling to look down. And actually, when I looked down, uh, we did uh, fly uh, I could scan out and I guess guess where it was, uh, but the airport and saw the house that I actually was living in. My parents were when I was born there in Los wow. Angeles. Wow! So uh, when I think of a helicopter and think of being able to think, and uh, I always think of that ride. Gene was on the helicopter with me, and we were going out across there, and that was probably an hour and a half after the game, going to the victory party. Well, hopefully when y'all fly out of Los Angeles again this time, it'll be with a four-game winning streak. Thank you very much for the time, good sir. You bet, guys.